Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. I don't normally do Baofeng videos. In fact, I don't know if I've ever done one, but I'm going to do one today. But actually, the information I'm going to share here is not specific to Baofengs. It could apply to really any ham radio HT or even a VHF UHF mobile radio. Today's topic is going to be your FM transmit bandwidth and why it's important to set it correctly on your HT especially if you're going to be using your HT with a repeater. Now the inspiration for this video today actually comes from the fact that my local club repeater was recently upgraded and moved to a new location. So there's actually been quite a bit more traffic on the repeater than usual. And that's because there are new hams and even seasoned hams and club members getting on the repeater to try it out and see what the new coverage pattern is like. And in some cases, some of them have been pretty hard to hear. And that's not because there's anything wrong with the new repeater. Quite the contrary, the new repeater is working better than it ever has. I think the problem lies with the transmit bandwidth that people are setting in their radios, or maybe more accurately, forgetting to set. Now the reason it's important to check this setting in your radio's programming is that Sometimes it defaults to the narrow bandwidth setting, whereas most ham radio repeaters are designed to work with the wide bandwidth setting. And the upshot of that is, if you have your radio set to narrow and you transmit through a repeater that is set up for wideband operation, your audio is going to be very, very low and you're going to be hard to understand. And what ultimately that's going to result in is the stations that you're trying to talk to not being able to hear you very well and your overall experience on the repeater is not going to be very enjoyable. So if your radio has been in storage for a while or maybe if you're a new ham and just getting on a repeater for the first time, you may want to double check this setting in your programming to make sure that it's compatible with your local repeater that you're trying to access so that you can have the best experience possible. So now let's do a real world test and see what the difference is between narrow and wideband both on simplex and through a repeater. For this test I'm going to use two different HTs. I've got a $25 Baofeng UV5R here and I've got a more high-end but older Kenwood THF6 over here. For the first part of the test I will use simplex and I'll first start off with the Baofeng transmitting in wide mode and then I'll switch over to narrow mode and we'll see what that sounds like. And then I'll repeat the test using the Kenwood HT. After the simplex test, I'll go away from the shack here a little bit so I don't desensitize my SDR receiver while I'm transmitting. And we'll go through the repeater so you can hear what that sounds like. And I'll do the same test. Wide band and narrow band on the Baofeng and then wide band and narrow band on the Kenwood. The software that I'm using is the Preview 2 version, or beta version, of SDR Connect. I've got the radio tuned to 14652, and I've got the software set to FM mode with a 15K width. Now I realize this may be a bit confusing, but in the SDR Connect terminology, the narrow FM bandwidth is for any FM bandwidth less than say 20 kilohertz in width. If we were to switch this to wideband, it would go out to 192 kilohertz in width, which is what you would use if you were gonna to listen to a typical FM broadcast station. Now wide mode on the HTs that I'm testing should be somewhere around 12 kilohertz. So I've set the bandwidth here to 15 kilohertz, so it's just a little bit wider than that. So we should be able to capture the entire bandwidth, whether we're on wide or narrow mode on the HTs. Let's start off with the Baofeng in wide FM mode. Now, for these tests, to give you a little bit of an audio sample, I'm going to read off some quotes from a couple of my favorite books. If you know what those books are, let me know down in the comments below. Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemists, but that's just peanuts to space. Baofeng, wideband mode. Now let's try the Baofeng in narrow mode. All through my life, I've had this strange, unaccountable feeling that something was going on in the world. Something big, even sinister, and no one would tell me what it was. No 
No, said the old man. That's just perfectly normal paranoia. Everyone in the universe has that. Baofeng, narrow mode. Now let's try the Kenwood in wide mode. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Kenwood in wide mode. Now let's try the Kenwood in narrow mode. Yet such is oft the course of deeds that move the wheels of the world. Small hands do them because they must, while the eyes of the great are elsewhere. Kenwood in narrow mode. So that's what things sound like on simplex. There's a clear difference between wideband and narrowband when listening on the SDR receiver. Now radio to radio, the difference might not be as noticeable as it was in this test, especially if you're using the two radios in fairly close proximity and the signals are strong. In other words, you can probably get away with one radio being set to wide and the other one to narrow. It won't be that big of a deal. However, when you're trying to use a repeater with a radio set to narrow mode, that's when you'll start to notice a bigger difference, especially if you are a little bit far from the repeater and your signal is kind of weak into the repeater, people are going to start to have trouble hearing you. For this next demo, we're going to do pretty much the same thing we did with Simplex, but we're going to do it through a local repeater. Even though it's a snowy day, I've decided to hike about a thousand feet out in the woods behind my house so that I don't desensitize the receiver for the next test. I'm actually going to get on the repeater and change the setting between wide and narrow and see what that sounds like. W1AEO and one nug Are you around, Steve? Welcome to the Bears repeater, W1BRF. N1NUG, W1AEO. How you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Just uh, taking a break from doing some snow blowing here. I wanted to test out a couple of HTs I've got. I'd be happy to help you out, um, but you were breaking up on your last transmission. I got about half of it. Okay, let me change my orientation. How's that uh, right now? That was a bit better. It was. Uh, I heard you all the way through the transmission, and it sounded a little bit cleaner. Thanks. Okay, let, let me make to this video, and then uh, I'll have you uh, tell me what you think it sounds like after I make the change. Give me a minute, I'll be right back. And one thing. Okay, this is less time than I thought it was. Uh, do you notice any difference in the audio quality after I make that change? I don't notice a difference in the audio quality, but the volume level has uh, dropped noticeably. It's a little bit weaker. I'm going to get back the way it was just for comparison's sake. Transmission is back the way it was originally. Uh, is this better now? Yep, your audio is um, is very noticeably louder um, on that and, uh, and farther up out of the noise. I'm going to actually switch radios. I'm going to go to a different radio now and do the same test. So give me a minute to uh, get that one set up and I'll be right back. N1 NUG. W1 AEO, N1 NUG. How does this radio sound to you? N1 NUG, W1 AEO, this radio sounds really good. Uh, is this another HT? Yes, the uh, the first HT was a Baofeng, just a regular UV5R. This is an older Kenwood. I'll tell you the model number on the next over. Okay, yeah, both of your transmissions on this one, um, neither one of them broke up. Good, strong audio, probably about the same amount of noise in the background, but um, strong, clear audio above it. I'm going to make a change to this one, and uh, I'll see what you think of the audio after I make the change. I'll be right back. N1 NUG. W1 APO, N1 NUG. Do you notice any difference on uh, this transmission? Yup, it's the same effect um, that I heard on the Baofeng. The, uh, the strength, the loudness diminished noticeably. It's almost like you went from um, a lower, you went to a lower power setting, lower wattage. Okay, I, I actually didn't change my power setting. I was just playing around with the bandwidth setting. How much of a difference it made to be in wide band mode versus narrow band mode. And that's, I'm in narrow band mode right now. And that's when you said on both radios, the audio drop level dropped considerably. Um, which I kind of expected, but I wasn't sure how dramatic it would be. W1AEO, well that was really interesting. Um, like I said, I just figured you were dropping down the power level to see if you could get out, but uh, that's pretty cool. I did not know that. So as you saw in those previous clips, 
The difference between narrow mode and wide mode when going through the repeater is quite noticeable and can make the difference as to whether or not somebody can hear and understand you or can't. And that's why it's important to check the bandwidth setting on your HT, especially if you're using something like this Baofeng UV5R. I hope this video was helpful. 7.3, and thanks for watching.